I was invited to teach online a, 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 a four-week playback theater training online um, as part of a, another network. And I was very resistant at first and um, just sort of shell-shocked and, and quite um, certain that this wasn't going to work out, you know, that we'd have to wait a year or whatever it would be before we could resume our practice together. Um, but I'll just say on the other side of this sort of bizarre journey this spring and summer, I think it really works. I think it works well. It's different. I call this thing, this playback practice online, an adaptation of playback of the original form. Um, but I think the essential ingredients are, are there and that the essential kind of um, core values and rituals of playback can be sustained and, and practiced in this virtual space. So I, I, I'm just very curious about this whole um, new world that we find ourselves in. I think there are actually some really incredible benefits that I can talk about later that I've discovered. There are some serious limitations. Um, but overall, in terms of playback practice, in terms of playback performance, and in terms of playback training, it, it's working. It, it's, it, it may be a placeholder, it may be a, a substitute while we kind of uh, wait out this um, global health crisis and during this time we can't travel and move around and gather. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's temporary, but my sense is, is that as we um, solve the coronavirus problem and are able to meet again, that there will be some kind of hybrid um, creation in terms of playback practice, that we will remain online to some extent because there's such great access. Mm -hmm. The global reach is, is really far and people can meet very quickly and easily as long as you have a, comp a, a device, as long as you have internet, let's mention. Um, uh, but of course, I don't want and I hope that virtual playback, online playback doesn't replace live embodied playback. Sure. So, so yeah, I think, I think it's, it's it, you know, it, it's one of the silver linings perhaps of this strange eight month, you know, difficult time that many of us, all of us have been through is, is to discover this new way to practice and teach playback. Well, I think we have um, such a big capacity for adaptation. You know, just in the last few months, um, as a race, as a people, we have tried so many things online. Um, and I think the feeling is also that um, coronavirus might be under control maybe in a year or two, safe enough for people to travel, but something about the online space is going to be remaining with us because we've gotten used to it. It's given so many people more access. Um, and earlier on, you mentioned that you know the New York School workshops online. Um, you uh, you mentioned that it's working, that it it, it works. Uh, yes. Maybe this is a general question. Maybe it's a question about workshops online. What would you say is working? You know, what would we look out for for something to yeah. see something is working online, teaching online? Mm -hmm. Well, so we had our program planned to meet in person over the summer. Uh, we had five different consecutive workshops. And in the spring, we had to make a difficult decision to create a hybrid format so that we would do in person, uh, we would do online in the summer, in person in the fall, um, and, 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 and cut our courses in half and meet half, half of it in the summer, half of it in the fall. And then as this pandemic continued to uh, worsen and become more serious, travel restrictions remained, we had to move completely online. So we did our whole summer fall program online. Uh, advanced practice is still in session. There's some people in this room who are in that class 
who will meet again next weekend. Um, and so this was a big experiment. Can we teach core training, conducting, inclusive group, uh, advanced practice, sampler, all of this online? And we, we did, people came. More people than usual came to the workshops. We had a full room, again, because we don't need to buy plane tickets. We don't need to uh, find hotel rooms, Airbnbs, and we don't need to get visas. And there are people. There were people in the workshops who've done lots and lots of playback before, um, pre-coronavirus playback. And then there were many people in the workshops who've never done playback or seen playback. So I taught core training. There were 18 people in the workshop. I, I think half of whom had never seen or done playback before, or more than half. And I say that it, that it works because even though for us, who many of us have been doing playback uh, live for all these years, for these folks, they didn't have that reference or that comparison. And there was a transmission. So something happened for them. It was a deep experience, uh, according to the evaluations and what people were able to tell me. But um, a, fr from, from what I heard from the students, um, the, this core training online was a very deep and meaningful experience for them in which people told their stories, people acted out their stories, and there was some very strong connection uh, and empathy built within the group. So these are the main ingredients. I think about the three circles, art, ritual, social interaction. And I've been thinking about how do they uh, show up or how are they compromised in online playback. And although there are adaptations, there are adjustments we need to make artistically for sure, suddenly we are film actors. We're working with a frame, we're working with image, we're working with props. So there are adjustments in the art. Social interaction, this is, this is a different way to interact, but we still do and we still can. We can have a meaningful exchange. I can tell my story here. You can really listen deeply to my story here. I can feel seen, I can feel heard. And ritual, yes, the rituals need to bend. So fluid sculpture is not going to look like our live fluid sculpture sculpture anymore. I, I can't quite look you in the eyes. This is a limitation. Um, I can't hug you if you're feeling emotional uh, from seeing your story or put my hand on your shoulder. Uh, there are some nuances certainly that are lost and I find one of the biggest limitations in online playback has to do with the container and the quality of attention. But we can talk about that later. So in core training that ended about a month ago, um, all I can say is figuring out what these adjustments are in the curriculum, um, figuring out this platform, Zoom, you know, there are lots of different skills we had to learn quickly, but people learned playback. People were very turned on by playback and want to continue their training. Um, and, and I'll just pause to say that um, Randy and I decided to sort of qualify before our trainings uh, began that we're teaching online playback. So in these trainings that just finished or that are still uh, underway, we are, teach we, are, we, are, we are sharing the history of playback theater, the principles of playback theater, the core values, the three circles, um, the rituals, the, 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 the intention, the applications, we're using this for social justice, etc. cetera. Um, but we are teaching online playback. So how do you conduct here online? It's, it's a slightly different set of uh, steps and stages and the ritual is a little different. How do we act online? So let's just keep, make that clear that um, training, playback training, online on Zoom, let's say, is uh, online playback training. That's what we're teaching. So um, 
I'm not entirely sure about this question where it's, it's uh, well, let me, let me know if you understand the question. So uh, are you teaching with the idea that your students might at some point in time do physical face-to-face -face playback? But that in the workshop, yeah, you're I, using online. I think I have that, 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 that hope and that goal in mind all the time that especially let's say with core training students um, that this 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 can serve as a way in as a way into the house but please go you know when we can uh, come to some in-person gatherings whether that's a performance or another training and um, so I there's a lot of encouragement in, in that regard, you know, that, um, that, that this, this, this works, uh, it's what we have to do for right now. Uh, but, um, there are elements that are missing and there are ways I think that we can kind of connect in an even deeper way when, when we're in person in the room. So mm. we encourage everybody that we've been meeting in these, in these trainings to, uh, stay tuned and look forward to in-person gatherings in the future. And, and I should uh, pause to say, um, Randy, that uh, who you mentioned just now, uh, is Randy Mulder, your co-director at the New York School. Yes. And he has also been teaching one of the courses online as well. Yep, yep. He taught conducting um, this past uh, August and, and October, yeah. So just give us a sense of what, what are the topics that you have been, that the school has been teaching online in, in the past few months? Um, so we, we did a couple of samplers uh, just for new people to kind of expose them to uh, give them a taste of playback. We taught core training. We taught um, conducting the, the story, the group and the event, uh, inclusive group, advanced practice. And then we'll be offering music, core, again, and conducting again, and uh, promoting uh, social justice through playback theater in, in the winter. So that's almost the entire curriculum up to level three, all the way up to level three. Um, and I heard you mention some of the things that you were introducing in core training. It pretty much sounded like you know, everything that you would teach in a face-to-face -face workshop anyways. Um, so something like conducting, I mean, I know Randy taught that, but maybe you would have some idea. Um, is it important? Do we, should we, uh, you know, teach somebody which is the right chair, for example, you know, the conductor chair and the teller's chair, if we are doing this online? You know, something as Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, I, so I, um, you, you know, I, I, I taught conducting in, in a few of these workshops I didn't, I will be teaching it in February, but, um, so I'm not sure what Randy did, but, but I mention, I mention, I show a picture of the playback stage. I mention the teller's chair, but I don't teach. No, I mean, you know, like for instance, in conducting, you teach the swivel. How do you stay open to the teller, but bring the story out to the audience? Mm -hmm. So none, so those things aren't relevant here. Um, so we're teaching something different, you know, so how do you scan through the pages to see the tellers? How do you choose the next teller? Um, how do you kind of tune in to the emotional state of the teller here in the screen when someone's two inches big? Um, how do you, even it's just the dials of the turning the camera on and off and keeping that flow and holding the whole room and so it's a different, yeah, as I said, we've been teaching online conducting, online acting, online playback. However, always mentioning the original, mentioning some of these features of the in-person practice. Mm. Yep. I, I think I feel like once you've said that, it really becomes important that it's acknowledging what was um, and what yeah. is now? Yeah. Well, because as, as, as we all probably know and imagine, I think we'll be doing playback this way for a while. Um, maybe it will, it will start to phase out or become less, um, but there, there, there's no vaccine in sight yet. 
so so here we are so 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 how do we how do we how do we do this in this way for now and and those are the that's the new skill set it's a whole different acting world right yeah and it's at first i was completely turned off and and freaked out by this idea of using a camera and not using my body but it's really fun you know this this new online playback acting um set of uh of elements that we're working with now it's 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 new and different so so since you went to acting um you know, I want to ask how is how is it like teaching people to act through the screen? Um, you know, what what kind of uh, tips or what kind of uh, techniques can you share with us? Well, yeah, I mentioned this uh, briefly uh, earlier, but you know, so we're we're working with this frame now, um, and so for me, the idea of image becomes very important. We're making images more than ever: stage pictures, images, image theater. Um, so how do we work with this frame? And then, you know, there, you create a bunch of warmups around the frame and there's, there are levels and they're zooming in and zooming out. Um, how do we still embody the story, even though we're in this two dimensional space? Um, how, and then suddenly not only can we use props, you know, um, but we can use sets, settings, environments. Um, so we can go outside, we can go into a, a, a closet, we can go upside down, we, you know. Um, so I think what we need to do in our playback teaching in this online uh, format is, is, teach, is teach film acting um, to some extent, because we're working with this camera now, uh, we're working with image, we're working with frame, we're working with zoom in terms of getting close and getting farther away. Um, and then how can we be creative inside this frame? So we don't always want to just be in the center here. Right. We want to really play with, play with it um, and find different angles, uh, find different body parts that can appear. Um, I think, um, and, and then, of course, it's the playback forms. How do they how, how, how do they need to adapt and adjust? So not only are we playing with I image and frame, but suddenly how can we work with each other, the others in their frames? Um, and it becomes very visual, right? So we're not sort of sensing each other on stage. We can use all our senses. And here it's really kind of odd audio, but a lot of visual sensory work. Um, I find one of the big limitations with online playback is interaction, right? In terms of acting, how do we do our scene work? How do we create dialogue? Of course, sound is, is, a, is a big challenge on Zoom, simultaneous sound. We have music and playback. It's such an important element. Um, how does the musician show up in online playback? How can we still hear the actors? Mm. So, you know, we can't face each other. If it's a two person <coughs> scene in a story, uh, it, it, you have to be very creative right. um, and sensitive. Right. So, I mean, on the screen, I guess it's really about exploring then composition, um, even in the workshops, just trying things out. What yeah. makes on the yep. screen. Um, uh, you mentioned the form, so I want to go to rituals next, but could you just kind of share um, what does it mean for, for something to work in terms of acting on the screen? One or two mm -hmm. words or a sentence. Mm -hmm. Well, I think of those three circles again. So hopefully artistically, whatever happened was interesting and compelling and aesthetically pleasing. Um, and it wasn't just everybody kind of doing something at once or the same thing or, you know, that we still create aesthetics and beauty and meaning in the artwork, in the composition work, the acting. Um, and then, of course, that the teller felt seen and heard, you know, that the, felt, that the teller sees a reflection of her story. 
um, I think that makes makes whatever form you're doing or whatever adaptation of the form you're doing successful. Right. So it's 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 a new skill, like you mentioned. Um, so let's then talk about ritual. Uh, perhaps I might um, ask you, uh, how would you explain ritual typically, and is there a difference in in teaching it in the online space? Well, yes, as we know, playback theater is a it's, a, it's a spontaneous emergence of stories. It's a ritual that we're all participating in. And so therefore creating the container is very important so that this group of strangers, let's say, who become neighbors, uh, feel comfortable to be, become vulnerable and tell their stories. Um, tell their story in front of a hundred people or whatever it might be. Um, so that all remains intact. So somehow we as a performing group or, or a trainer or a conductor need to make the group here, even online, to feel connected and comfortable. So sociometry, connection, and who's here and how are we connected and the, the actors need to role model with their intro stories. All of that remains, I think, still very important. Um, uh, however, to me, as I mentioned, this is the most challenging bit online, is creating this container here in this kind of format. Mm. Can I even see everybody? Um, can they see each other? Um, are they checking their phone the whole time? Um, Again, quality of attention. So if we're all in the room participating in a theatrical event, uh, there's, some, there's, a, there's a charge in the space, a charge of energy, and, and we're, we, we are engaged. And we'll see you if you take a phone call in the middle of a story. Uh, online, it, it, there's a lot more distraction. We're at our homes. There's life. There's a knock on the door. There's, a, there's a, someone needs you. Um, so I find that somehow um, two things remain true at the same time. We need to create the container. I've been doing some very sort of big playback theater performances recently uh, for, for, for big clients, let's say, who want to do diversity, equity, inclusion work. These are, these are big companies. Um, international companies who've hired playback to do this work. And so it's very important to create that sense of container uh, for these people who've never even seen or done playback or anything like this before. So it's been a big challenge, but, but we're, we're, we're figuring it out and it's working. Um, so on the one hand, this container is, is very, very important. On the other hand, I've had to kind of, um, it's become looser somehow so that if someone's going to turn their camera off and, and sort of get up in the middle of the thing that has to be okay. Or if someone keeps losing internet connection and coming in and coming out, that has to be okay. Or if we're in the middle of a story and an audience member pops up on the screen for a moment and we see it has to be okay. Um, in the middle of a training, if someone has to come two hours late because their child, you know, that has to be okay. So I've had to sort of um, uh, let that ritual become a little bit looser. Um, but, you know, for me, when I talk about ritual and playback theater, typically uh, it also has to do with the catharsis and the transformation that comes through telling and seeing our stories. And that if done right and done well, remains intact. Um, it's happening. People are s seeing their story and feeling feeling moved and feeling lighter and feeling held and feeling connected. Uh, so I'm very, very pleased about that. Wonderful. Um, you know, I I've watched several shows online um, and some, I have to say, has, has really um, touched me to the core um, and also made me feel very, very vulnerable. Um, and I realized yes. that, you know, it's, it's also because the actor is looking me right in the face. Mm. You know? So 
So we don't, we don't really encourage that in a face-to-face -face context. But now, nice. with online performance, everybody's looking the teller in the eyes. And it's, it's just a different dynamic. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, so it, it really is a, 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 a new world that we're discovering. Um, I, I guess to some extent, we are trying so many things out in terms of teaching. Um, and, you know, we don't know what the next few years are going to, next few years are going to be like. Um, as you were sharing, I, I steadily um, started imagining somebody coming to a face-to-face -face workshop and, you know, not knowing what to do, even though they've attended all these online classes. And yeah. it may very well happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, just as you were saying that, it, a thought occurred to me, which is that, let's say in two years, when we're past this virus, hopefully not on to the next one yet, um, it may be, I imagine what will emerge is there are going to be uh, t two, two, um, t two variations of this technique. Um, there'll be the in-person playback practice, there'll be the online playback practice. And it is a different skill set. There, there are many of the same skills and then there are different skills that are needed for both. Um, and so once again, our world expands and it, it becomes bigger for more people and more different different people from around the world to to practice playback to perform playback in person and or online um so the field just gets wider so so coming back to the teaching online part um you know we we in the curriculum we do have recommended hours per workshop but online, it's incredibly tough. Oh, it's this is hard a big on the body, the mind, the eyes. Um, are the hours the same for what the school has, uh, your school has done? Uh, What's been the yeah, that, that's a, um, that is, uh, that's been a tricky kind of formula to figure out. But the answer is no. We're doing f a few fewer hours in our core training and our, you know, um, because again, it is, it is, it is quite different and it is quite taxing and exhausting to be here doing in front of our computers for, for six hours. So for advanced practice, I know Linda in this, in this, in this room right now is in it. And so she can talk, talk about it, but advanced practice, they've been going six hours, you know, they just did six hours for three days in a row and they'll do two more next weekend. And there's a lunch break in there, but that's that's almost all day on online. Now, you know, we're get I imagine, you know, we're getting up, we're moving around. It's not like we're sitting there in a in-person talky-talky meeting. Hmm. We are acting, we are doing theater. However, it's a lot of screen time. So, for our online training program, which we are continuing through the spring at least, we have had to kind of, again, loosen up in that way in terms of the hours, the required hours. Um, it's like one online contact hour equals one and a half in-person hours kind of thing. Right. It's, not, it's not exactly that formula, but we've shaved off a few hours uh, for the trainings just so that it's, it's feasible for people. The other thing is that these trainings, like a lot of these gatherings that we're having, are extremely international, beautifully international. People are showing up to these trainings from eight, nine, 10, 15 different countries, which is really rich and, and wonderful. And with that comes time zones, as you know, because you were part of inclusive group and you were participating in inclusive group in the middle of the night. So um, to that extent as well, we need to be, we want to welcome everybody and we're trying to figure out what's the sweet spot to catch Europeans and, and Asians and people from the East Coast and the West Coast and South America and everywhere. Uh, but we, you know, we need to be considerate and we can't go past 3 p.m. let's say because then all of our Asian colleagues and friends can't come you know so there's a lot of those kinds of considerations right 
Um, so something just popped into my mind, which is that, like you mentioned, anybody can attend any class now anywhere um, if they're willing to stay up and, and, and accommodate, uh, which also means in some way there might be less relevance for uh, particular schools because, you know, there is demand, there is, there is supply, and we can go anywhere now. Um, it's a comment. There's no question there. It's, it's just something that's popped into my into my mind. Um, so we ha we had uh, our audience um, send in several questions as they registered, and I'm just looking at a few of them. Yeah, there were some um, great questions. Really great questions. Mm. So let's start with a semi easy one. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm looking at. Um, what are don'ts for teachers of playback theater? What are what? Don'ts. Don'ts? Like do nots. Oh, don'ts. Yeah, but maybe let's put that in. in. So uh, I think, you know, let's, let's think about this in a different way. Were there habits about te of your teaching that you've had to change for the online platform? Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> ap yeah, a lot. So um, share with us a couple. Um, well, what first comes to mind is just being with people in, in, the, in, the, in the, you know, usual, you know, so when you start a training, you, you all show up to the space and you meet each other for the first time and you welcome people coming in from near and far and that, you know what it is? It's the mingling. It's the pre-workshop break and after workshop mingling when you're in the room and you're not necessarily in practice but you're getting to know each other um talking about the rest of our lives what what, what we do for work what our families about um so so i miss that part i miss that part you know and and, and so i think to that to that end i think we're uh, especially when we're meeting people for the first time we're, we're getting to know people a bit less than usual, M meaning when we're in person, um, the relationship building is, is deeper. So I miss that. As a, as a, as a dancer mover person, but you know, the physical aspect of playback theater to some degree is compromised, you know, again, because we're in this two dimensional format. So I really miss all of the exercises where we're, you know, um, using our bodies together. Mm. Yep, I, I, I really miss the mingling times because, you know, we, we, we do know so much goes on during the mingling. Yes. Know, also a chance yep. for you know, the integration of whatever we've learned is also transfer relationship building. So much is taking place in those coffee breaks. Yes, yes. I, I often say my favorite part of a playback theater performance is afterwards, right afterwards. Um, I, I just want to say, Alejandro, I saw that question. Um, and I think we will make time for that question. It's a great question. Um, and we'll do that after the break. Um, so maybe one or two questions. Um, so give us an idea of the, 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 the kind of forms that you are using in your online workshops. Okay. So, okay. We, we, you know, we do have short forms and then the long forms, but you know, what, what has it been like for the online platform? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a nice practical question. Um, so I've been using um, like a, a fluid sculpture, I call it Zoom sculpture, but I know that's kind of specific to Zoom and not everybody's doing their online playback on Zoom, but I call it Zoom sculpture and, and it's similar to a fluid sculpture, but it's different. <laughs> um, I've been doing pairs. They work quite well, just two people, da, 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 da. I've been doing Tableau, which I think works well on Zoom or on, online because it's image, image, image. Um, I, I started doing narrative V and I kind of shied away from it because unison movement is, is quite tricky if you don't have the same settings and, um, mirroring each other is hard. Um, 
I do full stories. Uh, I do full playback theater stories, you know, and again, the ritual, the, the steps of the ritual are different, mm -hmm. but it works. It, 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 it you know, um, it's a full long form. Um, oh, and three part, I do three part story. I think that works obviously very well because it's sort of solo, solo, solo. And I, and I, I've been doing four, I've been doing four part as well. Um, I'm experimenting a little bit with what we do in Big Apple called the beat mm -hmm. and the beat is music, um, movement and spoken word. Uh, so those those would be the main forms that I've been using. Right. Um, so and I know there are many others. I know voicemail and for uh, Foursquare, and I know there there are many many others. Yeah. Yep. There's there's so many um, creative and innovative forms right now. Yeah. And I guess you know out of all the performances that I've been watching, uh, those that really worked are really sticking yeah. to the ritual. You know the short forms, swift, yeah. sharp. And then going on to the longer stories. Um, yeah. so I guess that's really important, even in the online, even more important in the online platform um, to impart to our students. Yeah. Um, one last question before we take a break. Um, ethics. Ah. Uh, so so uh. at least in core training, you know, we, we, we talk about the ethics of playback theater, but now that we're teaching it online, then there are also ethics of doing playback online to think about. Oh. Um, could you share something about that? You know, it's a, it's a, uh, an, it's sort of a fresh topic for me. Meaning, I've, I've, I've been thinking about it, or I've, I've referred to it, but I haven't, I haven't really um, dug deep there yet. I haven't concluded anything yet. I, I feel like as we progress and move forward with this new adaptation of playback theater ethical concerns are certainly going to come up and they already are. So one perk of zoom playback, we can videotape so easily. There's the camera. We don't need a videographer. We don't need to pay anybody there. The show, the training is, is taped. Uh, but then what can we do with this videotape? Um, you know, people are using it. Um, again, you know, uh, and, and, you know, still with photos and our image and how, how are we, can we put people's images out there? Um, um, I, oh, you know, one interesting uh, element or, or area to look at in terms of ethics, I think it's ethics, but so we use breakout rooms a lot, right? Mm -hmm. In our, in, in the trainings, uh, in performances as well. And these breakout rooms um, are kind of like in the void. They are unmonitored. The, 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 people are just sort of sent off, transported into some, you know, virtual space together. And a couple times, some funky things have happened in, in breakout rooms. Um, most of the time, things are fine and, and people are following the instructions, but a few times in the trainings I've been doing, um, something untoward, something um, problematic happened in a breakout room. So that's something I'm thinking about is how to address that or how to keep that space really clear and right. safe. Right. Yep, I, I was just saying the other day to a friend that with breakout rooms, when we are all in the same room, even if we're doing small groups, we could walk around, we could see something's going on, and then we could go attend to it. But exactly, rooms, exactly. We're not, we're, exactly. We're not always there at the right time. Exactly, right. So when, when in, a, in, a, in a live training, when people get into small groups, we're all, as you just said, we're all still in the room, and the facilitator has, has, has her eye out and can see if there's some, some issue. But these online breakout rooms are, are very sort of private and, and, uh, um, and, and word, unmonitored. unmonitored. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We've barely scraped the surface, but it's such a big topic. It, uh, is. it, it is time for a bio break.
um, and then we'll be back for, for more questions from the audience at this point. Um, so it, it, does, it does take finesse, it does take sensitivity. Um, it isn't easy, but neither is live version playback story. <clears throat> it's, it's a complex form. Um, so the way I've been doing it is, um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, I'm just going to pin myself so I can, uh, okay, there. Oh, no, I don't want to see myself. What am I doing? Hold on. I'm just going to make sure I can see all of you. <laughs> okay. I'll take um, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. So the, just, just quickly to run through the, the long form that I've been teaching <clears throat> is, uh, you know, we, we, as a performance team, we stay on stage and the teller comes on stage everyone else becomes an audience, so that they would turn their camera off. Um, so we do the interview, the teller tells their story, um, and then casts, potentially, who would you like to play you? Uh, the way I've been doing uh, that is... Uh, uh, I, I don't think that you can play. There are some people with the mic open. They should close it. Thank you. Um, so obviously we're not sitting on boxes. We're not going to stand when we're chosen. So I've just been having people maybe put their hand on their heart or some kind of acknowledgement that they've been chosen. Um, and then let's watch conductor teller goes away. Um, and then all of the actors clear their screens. Um, they even can turn their video off if they don't appear early on in the story, if they're not a main character. Musician plays a frame, uh, setting up music. And then the teller's actor enters her frame to begin the story. And the teller's actor will begin and end the story as usual. So teller's actor begins soliloquy or movement or whatever it is, prop, gesture. And then like a story, other actors will come in and out with, with extreme sensitivity uh, because we can't have too much sound at the same time. We can't have too much image at the same time. So it's, it's a, it's a dance. Um, and then ideally there are moments where there, there's, there is dialogue or interaction, you know, like I can pass something to Michael and he can catch it and there it is, you know, whatever my, you know, da, 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 da. Uh -huh, okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, so the illusion of that we're in the same room and in the same frame. Um, and then the teller's actor ends the story. Um, and then the music, musician plays a coda uh, ending music. I find it a little tricky when the musician is playing, is playing throughout the story like a live playback story. So that's, that's a sacrifice, I'd have to say here in online playback, the music. Um, so we have to find other spaces for the musician. But when the mus music can be a frame, it's very wonderful. And then hopefully the musician can add a few notes here and there throughout the story. But it's a constant dance of sound sharing, sound space share. Um, but it's just like that. It's, it's a uh, it's, it's fairly similar to the live version. It's just that we are, again, working with camera and frame and sharing space as usual, coming in and out. Great. Shall we try one? I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so, so I'm looking at the chat. Uh, there is one question that jumped up at me, uh, which is uh, from Andrea. And the question is whether online hours in workshops count if somebody wants to take a leadership? That's kind of more of a question for me, I guess, um, from the CPT, but you know, perhaps you, you might want to say something about whether the online hours count for the New York School I hope so. to go up. I and hope so. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. I mean, we're, we're certainly teaching these online training workshops um, with with the intention that these folks can continue to move through the sequence towards leadership. I mean, this is all about adap adaptation. Here we are, the whole world, dealing with a global 
pandemic virus and we've had to really adapt and adjust everything in our lives including our playback and including playback training so i'm hoping that the the center will also kind of adapt and allow these online trainings to count um even though they're a little bit different but as i said before i think what might emerge is online playback and live playback together in this world so learning online playback is a useful uh, uh activity and exercise because it as i mentioned i'm doing these 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 workshops and performances for quite these clients who <clears throat> i think suddenly are quite open to playback because um, it's an interactive, very unique, interactive, um, empathy building, uh, uh, experience for their teams and they don't, and there's no overhead. They don't have to pay for a venue. They don't have to fly anybody in. They don't have to put anybody up in hotels. It's a very, uh, accessible way suddenly for, for companies, organizations, let's say to, uh, build, build team connection. Um, so I'm saying that because I think learning online playback actually can be useful in the long term and not just for this coronavirus moment. So hopefully the center and Michael will accept and allow the online trainings as part of the leadership uh, curriculum. Well, um, so you know, it's, it's... <laughs> thank you, Hannah. Um, you know, I, I really want to say that it's, it's not just a matter of policy. It is us working together. Um, it is us also listening to the various affiliate schools and accredited trainers. And as we are exchanging more and more, then we get a sense of what people are doing in the online space. And that makes it easier for us to, to say yes to certain things. You know, if, if somebody from, 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 um, from the New York schools core training is, applying for the UK schools level three that has to be okay to with some considerations. So the more that we are exchanging, the more that we are knowing about each other's work, it's then easier to say yes. Um, and of course, there are certain situations where, you know, it's very easy to say no to a student because there are just some things that are, the student has not done. But I also have to say in many, many cases, um, we do uh, make suggestions of what else is missing. So it's not just a hard no, but you know, if you were to go to leadership and you know, there's some things that are not accessible to the student, we might make some suggestions or we might make some, um, what's that word? Um, accommodations. Accommodations, exactly. So, so the, the, the rules are there as a guideline um, and there are some things that we are strict on but we are always looking for reasons to say yes to people learning more about playback and becoming playback leaders in their communities. So that's the, 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 the long answer for now. Um, and you know, at some point in time, we all have to think about whether we're going to teach online playback you know, as its own yeah. entity and how does that yeah. then affect us you know, as teachers, as, as you know, curriculum designers, so on and so yeah. forth. Yes. Yeah, it's a slightly different curriculum, it's true. Yeah. Um, so anyone else has any questions about teaching? Um, and I see Rosie's hand, and then we'll go back to some of the questions on the chat. So first, a brief comment is um, I wanted to say in relation to the, the keeping of the online and the in-person. Um, we've been performing online since April, really badly at first. And, um, <laughs> but um, then um, about a month ago, we had an audience member at the end of the show raise their hand and say, we hope that when it's time to go back in person, this was someone who had seen online and in-person performances by our company. Uh, I hope when you go back in person that you keep online as well. We really like it. We love the differences that uh, have come out of it. So that's just one thing I wanted to say. I was sort of shocked. It wasn't even us saying it was like an audience member, like requesting that. It was like, yeah. well, you never know. So that was cool. And my question revolves around uh, this whole thing that you uh, were talking about of 
trying to get people to connect online. I think that's been our the biggest challenge that we continue coming back to is that we have amazing things happening, beautiful imagery, but um, a lot of times, you know, four people doing amazing things, but all separately. And um, I think the shows I've seen as well, I, that's what I've seen a lot of. And I think that that is awesome, but it misses something. So you're nodding your head, so you know what I'm talking about. And do you have anything in particular that you've used effectively um, to to create that? Yeah, are you you're talking about the acting, right? The playback. I am acting. indeed talking about the acting. Yes, the interaction Thank you. with actors. Interrupt. The actors that. working together. Yeah. Um, there are some really great. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, sorry, I forgot to say. Uh, Rosie, if you could just say a word about where you're from and if you're with a particular company, what company it is. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm say that, my no, bad. No problem. Uh, I'm in uh, the United States, Boulder, Colorado, with Red Thread Playback Theater. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so there are some really great games and exercises uh, that we can use to, 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 to do some scene work here online. So that's one way. It's just those games that really um, build those muscles uh, for for dialogue and, you know, um, interaction, one-on-one -on -one interaction, let's say. Um, and then I think, it, you know, I mean, there are, there are these little, you know, I'm sure we're all discovering them, but like even just, you know, doing this thing of like, Rosie, are you thirsty? Do you do you want a sip? And and then and then you 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 have a cup. Yeah, there you go. Um, so right there is a is a connection and and an illusion, illusion that we are in the same space. Um, and then I just think it's a matter of practice, practice, practice. Many of us here have been practicing playback with our companies or with whoever for a long time, and you you you. Um, you know, you, you, you refine your, your uh, artistry together and your communication um, and, and awareness. And so I think here online also, so you guys have been working together online since April and I imagine more and more um, in terms of finding the space, the spaces, the empty spaces in the enactments um, and it's that listening thing. I'll tell you, listening on Zoom is much harder. Uh, it's like there's a lot of visual going on. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I think it's a constant, I mean, me too. I'm still trying to, how do we create kind of uh, one image at a time as opposed to m multiple images? Um, and, and I think we can just continue to think of exercises that, you know, kind of emphasize that um, skill building. Um, but I, as I said earlier, this is one of the challenges, you know, interaction in the same way. So therefore, potentially, our enactments may have less interaction. It may be, may be more like a watercolor, it may be more like a painting, it may be more about prop and image and um, aesthetic and less about scene work. I don't know. You know, I think we have to continue to uh, explore. Thank you. Thank you. Um, shall we look at the chat for a question? Well, sure. Okay. So let's see. You can how about from, which might from be Lou. Lou says, how can we create an after show space where we can, where we normally hear stories and give some care and space to the audience who didn't share anything. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's a really good question and and something. Can I say I something about that. Mm -hmm. um, I just found that uh, online it's a very harsh and and uh, a very harsh and abrupt ending at a, at the end of a performance. And yeah. I have felt afterwards like I am now on my own with yeah. all this stuff and I can't yeah. bring that anywhere. Yeah. And uh, we're doing in um, in Ireland with Full Circle Playback Theatre uh, two performances in the next while with mental in uh, for mental health hospital. 
And I'm very conscious that that will happen because that's normally a big part yeah. of the performance is the after coffee drinking yeah. bit. So how can we create that? I, think I that's wonder. Another, another limitation of this format. However, what I've been doing is you leave the room open and, there, and you can mingle this way afterwards. If someone needs to have a chat with someone, there's a breakout room. Uh, what I've been doing with my team is going to, as a team, as performers, going to a breakout room right after so we can debrief. Um, but yeah, in terms of the audience, I would, I would, I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious, but maybe you can keep this meeting space open for a while and say that the mingling, that the conversation after a show is such, and the connecting after a show is so important. Um, and then maybe also if you're working with a, a mental health uh, population or, or that's your theme, I don't know who the show is for, but maybe you can make sure um, if you don't know the audience members yourself, if, if, if you're coming in as a, uh, you know, a, a, a troop uh, to come in and come out and you don't have a prior relationship, maybe you can find someone uh, connected to the organization who could check on, on people. I mean, that's what I've done in live playback, coming in and out of communities, just make sure there's someone on the ground who can do that, that aftercare work. Maybe other people have thoughts. Yeah, I think the, the latest version of Zoom also allows participants, if they have the latest version, to also choose the breakout rooms they want to go into. Yes, they can. So that's, so that's that's quite empowering as well. Like if they want to, they could go into room one, room three, come out again, go into another room. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of a, a, a good thing at the Open end. Open space. But it depends on everybody updating their software, which in my experience has not happened very successfully. <laughs> yes, Aviva. I have a question. <laughs> Um, that is related also to teaching, to teaching abroad. It means also I have many cancellations and it came up to teach on the, on, and there is the question of the translation. And I was wondering if you have any ideas how to, how to manage the translate, I mean, to work with a translator. And mainly I found it very challenging in teaching conducting with a translator. Any, any ideas you can share? Yeah, I, I've done it once and it was, it was tricky. The rhythm was very tricky. Um, but uh, yeah, when we're working in international spaces, it's important. I see that there's some comments in the chat maybe about uh, some ideas, but um, no, Aviva, I think it's just, finding that new rhythm. It's like you, teacher, translator, teller, um, and it just will slow things down as it usually does. Um, so you are not using any kind of... Um, no, I did it, I did it once. For, no, but most of my teaching online uh, over is these in months English. is in English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but thank you. Some, yeah, maybe some people um, in this group have, have chimed in on the chat with some oh. ideas. Okay, I will contact Sheila. She's, uh, okay. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, so. And that, I just that, mentioned that, that Andrea that. is doing translation right now. Yes. Um, so one of the ways that it's happening is uh -huh. through, probably they are on the phone. I bet they are ah, on the phone. See, isn't that great? And she's doing ah, translation okay. with others. So, okay. So Maria. Yeah. So right There's now, ways, this is being translated. Uh, okay, so I will, I will contact you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Aviva. Do we have a next question? I think we have uh, maybe a couple more minutes left. Or comments. Can I just see a quick show of hands uh, of, of you all? Who, who is teaching online? I'm curious how many of you are uh, exploring this space. Yeah. Okay, I, th I figured there were a number of you. 
Yes, Giovanna. Hi, Eric. Anna, the teacher, that... Um, You're a little bit soft. What, sorry? You're a little bit soft. Okay. Now you hear me? Better. Okay. Um, I'm trying different uh, way of playback theater online, and I'm still studying and experiment. But what I realized that I like a lot is very long form to keep the um, tele video on because I think it's very beautiful because all the audience can see the faces and what is going on. And mm. what do you think about it? I agree that it's it's like uh, original playback in that we get to watch the teller watch his story and that's mm -hmm. special uh, and important. Um, I haven't been doing it so much. I, 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 I have done that and I do it sometimes, but mostly I have the teller turn their camera off for two reasons. One is for so that we can create a stage mm -hmm. and the acting can really stand out. Um, and the other reason is to give the teller to give the teller some privacy, so that so that they don't have to feel on stage or being watched, you know, because they, they have to watch themselves, and it's sort of distracting, uh, p p possibly. So I don't think there's a right way or wrong way. I think again, we're all experimenting to see what works, and we're all doing this in different places and communities and cultures, and it's going to work differently in different places as well. Thank you. And, and do you want to tell everybody where you're, where you're zooming in from? And me? Okay. Yeah. I'm from Italy. No. Italy. Yes. Okay. So we have uh, two last questions. I think. I think Mark was raising. Where did Mark? Mm -hmm. Mark. We have a rash of hands. Um, so let's go, Mark. And then yeah. uh, the chat has a question as well. Okay. Um, my quick Judy. Hi. Hi. My question was how do you protect the teller as a conductor uh, when when he sees his story, when he tells his story? Uh, the, how do you manage that online? Yeah. You mean like if 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 they become very emotional or mm. something is not done well or I, again, I think it's um, more, it's more challenging than usual, but um, it, it, it's necessary and possible so that, you know, let's say we do a story, uh, let's watch, the teller goes away, uh, it, the, the enactment's over, mm -hmm. I welcome the teller back onto stage and I can see either that he's weeping deeply, sobbing, or that he's like upset. And then it's just a matter of, as usual, tending to the, that issue. So if it's emotion, then we're going to sit there like we usually do and take a little more time until they are um, composed enough to go back to their seats. Um, mm. Or if there's a problem in the story, I had this happen where um, there was a wrong, there was a kind of a misinterpretation that happened in the enactment. Um, and we, and, and the teller, I was able to see that there was something wrong and, and, and she was able to articulate the problem and we were, and we had to then, we addressed it as a performance. I mean, this was in a workshop. So I think it's just uh, that extra, you know, we have to just build our extra spidey sense, our extra sensitivity in, in this, in this way. But then I need to make sure when I, check back with you as a teller that you're satisfied and okay. There's no magical solution there, but I think just the usual stuff of uh, kind of looking, you know, as carefully as we can. Um, and, and those usual questions, uh, do, what, how does it feel like after seeing your story and addressing the problems if there are there. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. 
So uh, let's go Fabi's question at the chat, and then yeah, I that's a I good one. Beauty's hand, um, yeah, and and I think that then that will be the last question. Yeah, I have a rehearsal that's starting in fifteen in in, in twelve minutes. Um, so yes. I'm sorry, it's so crunchy today. Um, Fabi, your question was about small spaces. Do you want to just introduce yourself to everybody? Hey, I'm Fabi from Philippines. And your question was about um, how do we practice in, in, you said two by two? Holy moly, let me look. Two by two, holy moly. Okay, this is true. <clears throat> we, are, we are all playbacking from home and we all have different homes. I'm very privileged to have all this space um, and people have different size spaces. People have to do this from their office. I had a student, <clears throat> Who, was, who, who zoomed in from her car. <clears throat> it was a five hour workshop. She's in her car the whole time, bless her. Another student had to do it from her bathroom. <clears throat> I said, please just mute when you have to flush. <clears throat> but it's true, we have different spaces and here we are doing playback. We wanna, we wanna get up, we wanna move around, we wanna you know, run around the room. <clears throat> um, but not everybody can do that. And so <clears throat> I think we have to, again, just be very flexible with this. And if you only have, if you're doing this in a closet, uh, then you do it in your closet and, and you work with your face and you, <clears throat> you have, you know, up and you have down and I guess you have to get a bit more creative. But it's not to say that it won't work and it can't work and we need to be flexible. <clears throat> that some people, uh, you know, don't have great internet connection and uh, have to perform from their, their bathroom, uh, from their toilet, literally. So we just, um, we need to be flexible like that. I have one actor on my team right now who needs to do this from his bedroom. So there's the bed. And, you know, it's not ideal, but it is what it is. And, it's, and if he can be compelling as an actor, it doesn't matter what his space is. <clears throat> Judy, last Okay, um, yes. Um, I'm from uh, New York, the United States, and I have, I'm in community playback theater. And um, we experiment with ourselves. We've, we've been together for over 30 years together. Um, and we've been successful doing solo, 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 you know, but trying to do something with ensemble in some way I'm wondering, I mean, we experiment a little bit with chorus or with trying to do a fluid sculpture uh, at the same time. Um, I don't think we would ever perform it because so, so anybody who does ensemble work, I mean, sometimes it's very successful but it's a little miracle then. So um, any comments? I mean, I have to say chorus is one of my favorite forms. <clears throat> Thank you, Francis. Um, but I cannot, I have not, I guess, had the time or the adventurous enough spirit to <clears throat> really figure out how to do it here in this platform. I mean, I, as I said, I was working with Narrative V and for me, unison movement is so beautiful and I, it, it's so tricky here. Um, and then sound sharing is just such a limitation, uh, at least on Zoom. So I have found that these solo forms, these more solo forms are more effective. But let's keep exploring. Thank you. Thank you. I could speak to that a little bit. Um, we have been using chorus like and had some killer choruses. But like wow. you said, it's not, it's different because you have to be looser in what I've experienced. I have to be looser in what that looks like. And we practiced a lot of mirroring first, which we've gotten pretty good at. And that really formed the basis of then moving on to being able to do chorus. And again, chorus is like got got a looser feel and a more interesting feel and sometimes it's completely silent and that's got its own cool um thing so i, I would say do it because it's 
really fun and awesome. And when it hits, people are blown away. We have all these people in our audience saying, are you guys texting each other to plan this out? Are you on a private chat to plan this out? So I'm like, we score, we did it, we did it, you know, so. Well, Thank you. And I Sheila hope, too. I hope, uh, Michael, I hope that somehow we can invite each other in this group to, to performances. Like I'd love to see Rosie, uh, tell us when you're performing. Uh, and everybody else, it'd be really neat to. Sure. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think lots of us are uh, involved. Uh, I mean, lots of us here are involved in performances and also um, workshops. Um, if you are needing to be in contact with one another, please use the chat. Get in touch with me. I'll link you guys up. And the Facebook Around the World, Facebook yeah. Around the World, Playback Around the World Facebook group. Um, <laughs> Lots of things going on in there. Okay, sure. so on that note, let's give um, Hannah some time to breathe and get ready for her next rehearsal. Uh -huh. Thank um, you. Let's... Maybe we'll try chorus. Uh, Thank you, Hannah. Room. Thank you so much. It was great to see you all. Really, really wonderful. That That is a highlight of my day that I got to see all of your faces. Thank, Thank you. you Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Thank you Michael. Happy teaching. Thank Happy you, teaching. Michael. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll see each other at the next playback in conversation. Be well, take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Hannah, I'll catch up with you. You go run. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.